Madam President. Senator from Oregon. Madam President, I've risen on several occasions to bring attention to the challenges confronting our We the People Republic. Our system of government, which President Abraham Lincoln so eloquently described all those years ago as one of the people, by the people, and for the people. And I've talked about the powerful special interests working to corrupt the nature of our republic, thanks to the unchecked wealth flowing into our political system because of the Supreme Court's series of misguided decisions in Buckley versus Vallejo, in Citizens United, and SpeechNow.org. Today, I am honored to join with my colleagues from Minnesota and New Hampshire and Connecticut, organized by my colleague from, from uh, Rhode Island, who will be speaking in a moment, to show how these same special interests are using their vast wealth and resources to sway national policies and public debate to benefit their interests at the expense of the American people and to turn in our government into one of, by, and for a powerful special interest. There is no better example of what I mean than the debate surrounding one of the most critical issues facing our nation and the world today, climate change. Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan once famously stated that everyone is entitled to his own opinion, but not to his own facts. Well, man-made climate change is a fact. Scientists, universities, government agencies across the world have all said that man-made climate change is real, that it endangers our planet, and that we need to address it quickly if there is any hope for the future. Back in 2005, 11 science academies from around the world, including Brazil, Italy, Japan, and Russia, signed a joint letter stating that there is now strong evidence that significant global warming is occurring and that it is likely that most of the warming in recent decades can be attributed to human activities. Five years later, the Pentagon stated very directly, quote, the danger from climate change is real, it is urgent, it is severe. Fast forward five more years to 2015, and the American Association for the Advancement of Science warned that, quote, we face risks of abrupt, unpredictable, and potentially irreversible changes with potentially massively disruptive consequences to societies and ecosystems. But the fact is, we don't really need to turn to our scientists or to studies to know that climate change is real. We simply have to look at the world around us. We can see and feel it for ourselves. We saw it in 2014, when 2014 became the hottest year on record. But then we saw it in 2015, when 2015 became the hottest year on record. We see it as our forests come under assault from longer fire seasons and insect infestations because the pine beetles are not killed by cold enough winters. We see it in our waters, in our loss of snowpack, as fishermen fish in ever smaller and warmer streams for trout and, and salmon, and our farmers face less water for irrigation. We see it in the oceans, oceans that are 30% more acidic today than they were before we started burning coal at the dawn in the Industrial Revolution. That is, acidic ocean is endangering our sea life, killing coral, and causing real challenge for our shellfish. We see it in the droughts that hurt our farms, in the increasing powerful storms that regularly devastate communities and businesses and people's lives. So why, with all of this proof from the scientific community, with all of the proof from the facts directly before our eyes, does such strong opposition remain to the facts of climate change? We know the answer. It's because a powerful, moneyed interest has spun a web of deceit. Working for years and continuing to work to undermine mainstream scientific research and deceive the American people about the dangers and causes of climate change. These members are part of a special interest that has made their fortunes from fossil fuels. 
If they acknowledge the realities of climate change, it would suggest that their industry would have to dramatically change, and dramatically change in a very short period of time. In fact, according to conventional science, we have to keep 80% of fossil fuels in the ground if we are to have any hope of keeping carbon emissions within a range that does not trigger catastrophic, catastrophic consequences. That's why, in the minds of this industry, it's better to lie to the American people than to risk their businesses and their fortunes. Now, we've seen this movie before, when the tobacco industry lied to the American people for decades to discredit the emerging science, the emerging evidence that tobacco was killing millions of Americans. And now, the fossil industrial complex is lying to the American people. But this time, it's not just the health of Americans at risk, it's the health of the entire planet. The Union of Concerned Scientists published a report last summer which showed that for decades, the fossil industrial complex knowingly worked to deceive the American public about the realities and risks of climate change. One of the main ways they do this is by funding third party organizations, funding think tanks, funding advocacy groups to produce counter climate research, make people question which facts and information they can trust. We know that this is happening because various studies have revealed the incredible level of coordination between different groups and researchers who all receive corporate funding and who all work off the same script. Justin Farrell, a sociologist at Yale University, authored a study just last November that examined 20 years worth of articles and policy papers and transcripts from 4,500 individuals associated with 164 different groups known to be skeptical of climate change science. Comparing the work of those who had received this special interest corporate funding and those that had not, he found a clear coordinated effort among the corporate backed groups that cast doubt on the idea that greater amounts of man made carbon dioxide endanger our planet. Talking about his study, Farrell said that, quote, this counter movement produced messages aimed at the very least, at creating ideological polarization through politicized tactics, and at the very most, at overtly refuting current scientific consensus with scientific findings of their own. We know that these groups are backed by special interests. All we have to do is follow the money. That's how we know, for example, that between 1998 and 2015, ExxonMobil donated at least $30 million to groups and organizations whose main purpose was to spread misleading information about climate change. And it was discovered in paperwork connected to its bankruptcy between 2014 and 2015 alone that Peabody Energy funded at least $332,000 through a subsidiary to groups and organizations involved in attacking climate science and clean energy policies. But as much as the fossil fuel companies have contributed to these efforts over the years, the titles of the mastermind, the kingpin of climate science denial, those titles rest with Charles and David Koch. These oil and coal baron brothers, whose estimated $80 billion fortune comes from oil refineries, and coal reserves in Texas and Alaska and Minnesota and elsewhere, who control over five, uh, excuse me, roughly 4,000 miles of pipeline. These are the same businessmen who have pledged that they and their network of contributors will spend the better part of a billion dollars by the time the polls close on November 8th to try to influence the outcome of this year's presidential and congressional elections. Since 1997, the Koch brothers have directly funneled more than 88 million to think tanks and trade associations and advocacy groups and foundations and academic and legal programs which deny the existence of climate change. And according to a 2013 study from Drexel University, they are effective at getting their friends to give money as well. 
the study showed that most of the other largest contributors the anti-climate science movement were associated with the Koch brothers. The foundation run by the Devos family, or Art Pope, a retail magnate from North Carolina, a regular part of the Koch brothers donor network. That same Drexel study also shows, as the public opinion about climate change has shifted in recent years, the sources of funding for many of these organizations has become untraceable. On paper, for instance, Koch-affiliated foundations have pulled back significantly on publicly visible funding for organizations that deny climate change. It just so happens that funding from other sources, like Donors Trust, a donor-directed foundation where funders cannot be traced, has risen dramatically at the same time. The traceable funding of this network of deceit has decreased and the untraceable funding has increased. According to its website, Donors Trust specializes in being untraceable. Quote, our trust is for those who wish to keep your charitable giving private, especially gifts funding sensitive or controversial issues. Know that your contributions to your donor trust account that have, been, have to be reported to the IRS will not become public information. In 2003, only about 3% of the denial movement came from Donors Trust. But by 2010, as the Drexel study shows, the foundation is responsible for providing a quarter of all traceable foundation funding used by organizations engaged in promoting systemic denial of climate change. So the sources of the denial movement are being laundered. So the American people do not have a direct vision of those responsible. But we know from all this evidence who is responsible. Could it just be coincidence at the same time that the Koch brothers reduced their traceable donations to climate denying groups, climate science denying groups, that the amount of untraceable money going to them increases dramatically? Yes, I suppose it's possible, but it would be a very large coincidence. So we know that the Koch brothers have been prolific contributors to the climate change counter movement over the years. And it's a very safe bet that they are continuing to contribute anonymously to the cause through organizations like Donors Trust. But what is the result of all this? What has been the return on their investment? We have seen report after report from groups like the Koch founded and Koch funded Cato Institute with titles like, quote, Apocalypse not, science, economics, and environmentalism. Or how about this one? Climate of fear, why we shouldn't worry about global warming. We know that a grant from the Charles G. Koch Charitable Foundation helped fund a non-peer-reviewed study. Let me emphasize that, non-peer-reviewed study which claimed climate change doesn't endanger polar bears. Now I do a tremendous number of town halls, one in every county, every year, uh, 36 a year in, in Oregon, approaching 300 town halls since I was elected to office. Many of these are in rural areas where people get a lot of their information, well, to put it simply, from web sources and emails and lists that are often directly driven through a right-wing propaganda machine. These are the types of things that the Koch brothers try to spread in order to undermine what is happening before our very eyes. And when I talk to my rural town halls about the challenge, I say, you know what? Climate change is impacting you all most of all. It's attacking our force and our fishing. It's attacking our farming. And I go through the evidence on the ground in the state of Oregon, and people start shaking their head. Yes, they're aware of the pine beetle. They're aware of the the longer forest fire season. They've heard about the oyster industry in trouble because of the increasing acidity of the Pacific Ocean. They're aware of how the Klamath Basin has suffered three worst ever droughts in a 15 year period because the snowpack in the Cascades has changed so much over the last few decades, reducing the amount of irrigation water flowing to the region and the amount of rain that's falling in the region. They're aware of these things. So then they understand it, and then they see the reality. 
And then there's a glimmer of understanding that the message is spun out by this vast web of denial is false. And that they're on the front line. Rural America is on the front line. Reports and studies funded by the Koch brothers muddy the water of scientific fact, making it much harder for the average person to sort through and sift through the information that's available and know what the real story is. But where we see the Koch brother and friends money paying off the most is the influence that they are able to manifest here in Washington, DC. As we work to take on this challenge, the equivalent of approaching meteor bent on destroying a good portion of the planet, as we work to take it on, they work to make sure we don't take it on, undermining the legislation that's being put forward to incentivize a rapid transition from a fossil fuel economy to a renewable energy economy. Obviously, an emphasis of pivoting from fossil fuels to renewable energy would undermine the value of the Koch brothers holdings. It would be undermine the value of the fossil industrial complex. And so they lie to the American people. We see one substantial strategy after another. We know that the summer that cap and trade was being debated in 2009 and climate change started to become a focus of Tea Party rallies, that a lot of that was organized Americans for Prosperity. Yet again, a Coke founded and Coke funded organization. The issue seeped into town halls and public forums. What some members of the audience planted at various events by groups like Americans for Prosperity to raise the issue. Anti-cap and trade members of Congress regularly quoted from a study by the Heritage Foundation, another Koch-funded organization. They predicted the bill would add thousands of dollars to Americans' energy bills and lead to devastating unemployment, claims thoroughly debunked by the Congressional Budget Office. But in the Koch brothers climate denier fossil industrial complex world, facts don't matter. That our planet is at risk doesn't matter. They even use piles of letters sent to members of Congress that falsely claim to come from actual constituents. They work to build pressure from outside groups. And eventually, the Koch brothers and their allies won. The cap and trade bill never came up for a vote here in the Senate, even though it had passed the House. That was a type of return on investment the Koch brothers sought. They were able to use their money and their resources to stop legislation that could have helped the American people in the world begin to reverse course on the tragic direction we are headed. Madam President, that is not a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. That is a government against the people. That is instead a government of, by, and for a powerful special interest. Every one of us here has a public responsibility to act on behalf of our nation's national interests. We are stewards of the public trust. We are responsible for helping guide the United States and helping the United States guide the entire community of nations into a future of greater well-being. To do that, we must take back our republic from the special interests like the Koch brothers who are determined to corrupt our public bodies and our public debates for their own greedy self-interest. We must work together to restore the we the people government our founding fathers envisioned. So I'm proud to come here to the floor to join my colleagues from Rhode Island and Minnesota and New Hampshire and Connecticut. And I particularly appreciate my colleague from Rhode Island for organizing uh, this series of speeches. 
to expose the special interests behind the anti-climate science forces, ensure that, as President Lincoln so eloquently declared on that hallowed fields of Gettysburg, government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. Thank you, Madam President.